Hi there everyone, today we are gonna talk about microfiltration. What is microfiltration? Microfiltration is a type of physical filtration process where a contaminated fluid is passed through a special pore-sized membrane to separate microorganisms and suspended particles from processed liquid. It is commonly used in conjunction with various other separation processes such as ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis to provide a product stream which is free of undesired contaminants. Microfiltration is a separation technique for removing micron-sized particles, like bacteria, yeast cells, colloids, and smoke particles, from suspensions or gases. The process uses membrane filters with pores in the approximate size range 0.1 to 10 mm, which are permeable to the fluid, but retain the particles, thus causing separation. Microfiltration membranes were first commercialized in the 1920s, and were at that time mainly used for the bacteriological analysis of water. After 1960 the number of successful microfiltration applications grew rapidly. Nowadays microfiltration processes are operated in such different fields as the biotechnological, automobile, electronics, and food industry. Microfiltration is the largest industrial market within the membrane field, responsible for about 40% of total sales, both in Europe and in the USA. In 1997, the US microfiltration membrane market amassed revenues worth about $400 million, growing at an average annual growth rate of 6.6%. Microfiltration can be carried out in two different operation modes, dead-end, inline, filtration and cross-flow, tangential flow, filtration. Most microfiltration membranes are constructed with polymers, such as polypropylene, cellulose acetate, and polysulfone, but can also be constructed of ceramic or stainless steel. Polymers are preferred, as they allow flexibility and have favorable chemical properties, but ceramic and or stainless steel membranes can be used for processes that might require higher durability, such as for treating processed streams with a high pH, extreme temperature conditions, or high solid applications. Microfiltration is a membrane separation that usually serves as a pretreatment process for other separation processes such as ultrafiltration and nanofiltration. The separation process is carrying out using membranes with a pore size of approximately 0.1 and 10 micrometers, a molecular weight cutoff of greater than 1 million Daltons and a relatively low feed water operating pressure of approximately 100 to 400 kilopascals. The pore in microfiltration are permeable to the fluid, but retain the particles, which will cause separation process to happen at the membrane, since the pore's size is approximately 0.1 and 10 micrometers. Thus, microfiltration membranes fall in between ultrafiltration membranes and conventional filters. It is suitable to use to separate large size materials as sand, silt and clays. What are the types of membrane that exist? There are four types of membranes commonly used in microfiltration, which is mainly spiral wound membrane, hollow fiber membrane, tubular membrane and plate and frame membrane or tube sheet membrane. Spiral wound membrane consists of membranes, feed spacers, permeate spacers, and a permeate tube. First, a membrane is laid out and folded in half with the membrane facing inward. Feed spacer is then put in between the folded membranes, forming a membrane sandwich. The purpose of the feed spacer is to provide space for water to flow between the membrane surfaces, and to allow for uniform flow between the membrane leaves. Next, the permeate spacer is attached to the permeate tube, and the membrane sandwich prepared earlier is attached to the permeate spacer using glue. The next permeate layer is laid down and sealed with glue, and the whole process is repeated until all of the required permeate spacers have been attached to the membranes. The finished membrane layers then are wrapped around the tube creating the spiral shape. The advantages of spiral wound membranes are it comes in multiple configurations with different spacers, membrane types, lengths, and diameters that allow it to be used in a wide variety of applications. These elements have a very high packing density, surpassing the packing density of plate and frame, tubular, and capillary configurations. Spiral membranes also allow for easy cleaning through cleaning in place. Additionally, spiral wound elements offer the best value per membrane area, smallest footprint, robust design which prevents membrane breakage and has relatively low capital and operating costs. Spiral wound elements can be used for a variety of different applications including, sulfate removal cathodokinotic paint recovery, protein production and dye salting. 
hollow fiber membrane utilizes thousands of long, porous filaments ranging from 1 to 3.5 millimeters wide, that are potted in place in a PVC shell. Advantages of using hollow fiber membranes as it feature a very high packing density because of the small strand diameter. Because of the flexibility of the strands, specific filter configurations are possible that cannot be achieved in other filtration configurations. They can also be back brushed from the permeate side and air scoured. Moreover, it can process feed streams with highly suspended solid particles. Common applications for hollow fiber membranes include reverse osmosis pretreatment, wastewater treatment, food juice production, and biotech application. Tubular membrane modules are tube like structures with porous walls. Tubular modules consist of a minimum of two tubes, the inner tube, called the membrane tube, and the outer tube, which is the shell tubular modules work through tangential cross-flow and are generally used to process difficult feed streams such as those with high dissolved solids, high suspended solids, and lipids such as oil, grease and fats. Tubular systems have less fouling compared to plate and frame systems. Tubular systems allow for robust cleaning methods such as the use of harsh chemicals, backwash, and even mechanical cleaning which might not be available for other system configurations. They can handle the highest solids and emulsified oil load compared to many other membrane types and can be physically cleaned with sponge balls. They are commonly used for applications such as oil-based water treatment, highly suspended solid streams and lipid and fat processing. Plate and frame membrane or also known as flat sheet membrane utilize membranes laid on top of a plate-like structure, which in turn is held together by a frame-like support. Flat sheet membranes are bolted together with a frame around the perimeter. It works on the basic principles of cross-flow where feed enters on one side of the plated membrane and concentrate collects on the other end of the plate. Permeate travels through the membrane and collects on the inside of the supporting plate. A couple main advantages of plate and frame membrane systems include solids being able to be easily separated from water and easy cleaning of filter surfaces. Certain cross-flow plate and frame systems allow the plate and frame to be rotated, allowing more shearing forces and fouling reduction. Common applications for plate and frame configurations include cosmetics production, food production and beverage applications. How do we characterize a good membrane separation process? In most of membrane separation process, a general thumb rule is used to indicate the effectiveness of the process. The thumb rule classifies the membrane process performance through the permeate quality and the permeate flux. There are various factors affecting microfiltration process performance. Firstly, pressure. Pressure is a driving force for the membrane separation process. And sufficient of operating pressure will cause the low flow rate of permeate stream and inefficient of separation process. Extensive operating pressure applied toward the membrane will not only increase the operating cost needed for the separation, but also will increase the module fabrication cost. Temperature can be one of the factor. As permeate flux is very sensitive to the feed temperature, it increases as the feed temperature increases. This is mainly due to the decrease of feed viscosity with an increase in the feed temperature. More specifically permeate flux typically increases as temperature increases in a linear relationship. Flow rate. Lower inlet or feed flow rate will cause the membrane separation process to have a low permeate flux which makes the filtration not an economically feasible process. Finally, the fouling tendency. The fouling tendency of the membrane as well as the feed solution will affect the performance of the process. The greater the fouling tendency of the material, the higher the resistance of the membrane will be and the lower the permeate flux passed through the membrane as the time goes on. As we wonder, does microfiltration have advantages and disadvantages? The main advantage of this type of filtration is the ability to filter particles usually ranging from 0.02 mm to 10 mm in size. Examples of particles in this size range are paint pigment, yeast cells, bacteria and particles in beer pasteurization. However, these particles are larger than the solution in reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration which in return increase the pore sizes of the membrane and the permeate flux. Besides, the operating pressure of the membrane is also low which is about 0.1 to 3 bar. The low operating pressure holds minimal pressure loss as low as 0.07 bar in the membrane. For a dead-end setup of microfiltration, the energy consumption is low compared to nanofiltration or reverse osmosis. On the other hand, there are some cons in this type of filtration. It is sensitive to oxidative chemicals such as nitric acid, sulfuric acid and peroxide in high concentrations. The strong increase of the chemicals contribute to the depolarization of the membrane potential and destroy the barrier properties of the membrane. Furthermore, the membrane can be damaged by hard and sharp particles.
To avoid this, prefiltration is necessary before flowing the solution to the membrane. The ability to filter small particles seems to be insufficient for particles sized below 0.02 mm. For example, microfiltration could not remove dissolved substances from a solution. Microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration and reverse osmosis are related membrane processes differing in the size of the material retained by the membrane. There are a few industries and applications that uses microfiltration. Stereofiltration. Medical applications include guarding against microbial and particulate contamination of fluids being injected into a patient or used in hemodialysis. A typical dialyzer module contains several thousand fibers in a 2-inch diameter tube 1 to 2 feet long. Blood flows down the bore of the fiber, and an isotonic saline solution is circulated around the outside. Urea, creatinine and other metabolites in the blood diffuse through the membrane to the dialysate solution. The process must be carried out slowly to avoid shock to the patient. Typically 2 to 4 hours are required to eliminate all of the accumulated toxins. Pharmaceuticals Pharmaceutical applications are a major market for microfiltration membranes. Liquid products that contain macrosolutes are routinely sterilized by microfiltration membranes, particularly if they are heat labeled. Parenterals, antibiotics, blood products and ophthalmic preparations are examples. For some applications, the membrane may be exotic. Positively charged nylon membranes have replaced asbestos for many of the applications formerly requiring the unique properties of asbestos, including pharmaceutical applications and wine. Water and wastewater treatment. Microfiltration is the process of physically removing suspended solids from water, usually through a membrane. Usually, water microfiltration is performed by cross-flow separation, which involves a feed stream being introduced into the membrane under pressure and passed over a membrane surface in a controlled flow path. The portion of the feed stream that passes through the membrane is called permeate. The materials that do not pass through the membrane are flushed away and are referred to as concentrate. Cross-flow membrane filtration utilizes high cross-flow rate to improve permeate passage and help prevent the fouling of the membrane. This process operates at a lower pressure than nanofiltration and reverse osmosis, typically less than 100 C. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys like this video and don't forget to give a thumbs up.